Today, we're moving our youngest pigs from our barn to pasture. The pigs will spend the rest of their time at the ranch, about four or five months, on this pine tree pasture, where they'll have full access to grasses, roots, nuts, and other natural goodies. Ride along with us for every step of the barn to pasture process, including herding, loading pigs onto the trailer, setting up their new paddock, and more. Watch until the end of this video to see how these little pigs grow into these not so little pigs. Let's get a move on. Here at Heifer USA, we receive pigs every four months all year long. When the piglets arrive, we settle them into the receiving barn where they'll stay for the first 13 or 14 days. The receiving barn is set up to provide shelter, warmth, and comfort for the piglets to recover from their journey to the ranch. At first, the piglets will stay in the receiving barn and the adjoining corral space where they start getting familiar with the electric wire we use to keep them inside their enclosure. After five or six days, when we are confident that they're accustomed to the electric wire, we give the piglets access to pasture for the first time. After about a week of grazing and exploring in the hillside pasture next to the receiving barn, it's time for the pig's biggest adventure yet. Moving from the receiving barn all the way across the ranch to one of our three designated pine tree pastures. It's about 8.30 in the morning, and our livestock team is assembling to herd 150 pigs toward our corral system. In addition to Christine, our livestock specialist, and Donna, our ranch manager, we also have our volunteer, Lizzie, and apprentice, Ra. Herding pigs can be tricky, so it's best to have multiple people available to help. We'll be walking the pigs from their receiving barn to our corral, where they'll be loaded onto a livestock trailer. Loading the pigs through the corral makes the loading process easier on the pigs, allows our team greater control over the animals, and aligns with our low-stress animal handling philosophy, ultimately saving time and stress for the whole team. After waking the pigs up from their snuggly slumber, we encourage them to leave the barn on their own and make their way out to the hillside pasture. We use a few handling aids and techniques for effective, low-stress handling and herding. First, we wave these red sorting boards to direct pigs toward the corral. Sorting boards can also be used to block the pigs from moving in the opposite direction. Stay tuned to see how sorting boards come in handy in the corral. We also use a rattle paddle, which is essentially a long stick containing beads, pellets, or other small objects that make noise. This noise startles the pigs, prompting them to walk or run away from the source of the sound. To make an easy at-home rattle device, simply fill an aluminum water bottle with beads or BBs, screw the lid on tightly, and shake. Rattle paddles or devices work most effectively when the pigs can only travel in two directions, forward or backward. Out on pasture, the rattle paddle could make the pigs scatter in all directions, so it may be best to save this tool for the corral. It's important to keep the pigs together in large groups when trying to move them. Attempting to herd a single pig is tricky and frustrating, so the best approach is to keep the pigs together. If one or two rebellious pigs run away from the herd, we leave the herd where they are and focus on returning the runaway pig to the group. We set up a temporary fence at the bottom of the hill to keep any explorers from traveling too far ahead of the herd. Once the pigs are all together, walking them across the pasture or down the road is relatively easy. Christine walks ahead of the herd, calling for the pigs to follow her. Come on, pigs! The rest of the livestock team follows behind, making sure no pigs are lost or left by the group. Once we reach the corral, the pigs file in and we shut the gate behind them to ensure no one gets out. Well, almost no one. Are you proud of yourself? Now that everyone is contained in the corral system, we move the pigs through the gates, down the alley, and onto the pig trailer, which we've backed up directly to the corral. While the pigs are in the corral, it's an opportune time to weigh them. We're skipping this step for today since these pigs still have a lot more growing up to do. 
We'll weigh these pigs about 90 days after their arrival at the ranch and again before the first pigs go to processing. Using our sorting boards and rattle paddle, we move the pigs into the alley toward the trailer. Today, as we moved the pigs through the corral system, we had a bit of trouble with pigs wiggling between or underneath the bars of the corral and returning to the larger areas. Because the pigs are still young and relatively small, the corral system wasn't as effective and we had to herd the same pigs through the alley multiple times. For a quick, easy, and effective fix, Lizzie tied some spare cattle panel to the trouble spots and we were back on track for trailer loading. Since we're moving 150 pigs today, we'll need to take two trips, each carrying roughly 75 pigs. At the end of the alley in the corral, we've placed a wooden ramp so the pigs can walk up onto the trailer. Our pig trailer has three sections, each holding about 25 pigs. Once all three sections are full, we close off the corral's exit to contain the remaining pigs and lock the back of the trailer. Now we're ready to really get moving. This move is the biggest one the pigs will make here at the ranch. Following our established roads and paths, it's 2.75 miles from the receiving barn to the pine tree pasture, which is simply too far for the pigs to walk. After the 0.3 mile trek to the corral, we'll travel the remaining two and a half miles by trailer. At Heifer Ranch, we raise forested pigs, meaning that the pigs can graze on grasses and enjoy the sunshine, but they also have access to shade under the trees. Because we have three pine tree pastures and we raise three batches of pigs each year, we assign one pasture to each batch of pigs, where they will spend the rest of their time on the ranch. The pastures are then divided into paddocks. We follow spacing standards of 50 pigs per half acre of land, meaning that this batch of 150 pigs needs an acre and a half of land in each paddock. Keep watching this video to see how we decide when to rotate the pigs to a new paddock. When we arrive at the paddock with the pig trailer, we make sure to turn off and roll up a section of the electric wire that marks the perimeter of the paddock. We want it to be as easy as possible for the pigs to find their way into the paddock. Okay, so it's time to release the pigs and they'll have access to their first official paddock. Um, so we are just going to open this trailer door. One or two people will stand on the other side and then we'll let the pigs load themselves off. We open up the trailer and encourage the pigs to leap off and explore their new home. Because they've never been moved before, the pigs can be nervous, but with a little time and coaxing, they'll make their way out to the pasture. Before we head back to the corral for the second group of pigs, we need to make sure that the pigs in the paddock have everything they need to thrive. We set up a waterer at the edge of the paddock with fresh, clean water. We run the electric fence over the top of the waterer to keep the pigs from climbing and wallowing in the water. We place cinder blocks on the ground so that the smaller pigs can climb up to reach the water. We also transport the feeder from the receiving barn down to the paddock so the pigs can access supplemental feed. Because pigs are monogastric animals, meaning they only have one stomach chamber, just like humans, they need more than just grasses to be healthy. Ruminants with four stomach chambers, like cows and sheep, get all the nutrients they need from plants, but monogastric animals need a bit more variety to thrive. That's why we supplement their forage with Grassroots Swine Grower Number 1 feed. We use Osborne Bulk Feeders, which hold 2,000 pounds of feed, and release feed using this turning mechanism. We aim to have one feeder for every 50 pigs, so this paddock will get three feeders. Because the pigs have been eating out of this kind of feeder for the past two weeks in the receiving barn, they have no trouble getting that extra snack out on pasture. 
Though the pine trees in the pasture provide shade from the sun, occasionally the pigs need a bit more shelter from the weather, especially in the colder months. We place several aluminum porta huts throughout the paddock and fill them with hay so the pigs can bed down and snuggle up when the weather is chilly. We also leave a hay bale in the paddock so the pigs can bed down there as well. While the pigs explore their new home, we turn on the electric fence and test that it's working. Then we hop in the truck and head back to the corral to start the process over with the second group of pigs. All right, we're mid-move. How are you feeling? I feel so productive, to be honest. It's a big day, but after they're out of the barn, they're as happy as can be. And that's worth it. Totally worth it. Pigs are notorious for rooting, stomping, and tearing up the land they live on, but this is all part of the regenerative process. After the pigs leave this paddock, grasses and cover crops will shoot up in abundance thanks to the manure and impact the pigs have left behind. We typically move pigs from one paddock to another every seven days. Now that all 150 pigs are on pasture, we'll let them stay here for seven to ten days, depending on weather conditions. If we have a heavy rainfall, we'll move them sooner because the paddock will become muddy in the places where the pigs have started to root and eat grass cover. Apart from the weather, giving the pigs extra time on this paddock is beneficial for a few reasons. Because these pigs are still small, they won't impact the soil as quickly or as noticeably as the bigger pigs. With extra time, we can achieve the same amount of positive animal impact. The pigs also benefit from extra time to settle into the pasture lifestyle before moving on to the next paddock. Though we use low-stress animal handling techniques, the big move from barn to pasture can be exhausting, so it's important to allow the animals time to recover before moving them again. All of the pigs' following moves will be easy, just shifting to adjacent paddocks within the same pasture. Once they understand the moving process, they'll practically move themselves. With all of the pigs on pasture, we now have an empty receiving barn to sanitize. We clean the receiving barn as soon as possible so that sunlight and time can kill off any remaining bacteria before we receive the next batch of pigs in three to four months. To see the entire process of raising pastured pigs, check out our video, Raising 400 Pigs on Pasture, or our Pastured Pig Production live stream for answers to all of your questions about raising pigs. Thanks for riding along on the great pig move. Stay tuned for more farmer training videos as we raise this year's pastured pigs. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified every time we publish a new video.